everybody, welcome back. We're right here on the banks of Lake Morton. I'm Mark Jackson, if you're just joining us, and to my right, Mr. Ryan Buckley. Uh, I'm glad I made the cut through the first segment. It was getting tight there. I didn't know if I'd still be allowed on, but I appreciate it. Typical Florida summer day here. High 80s, and uh, we got a beautiful breeze. Or I should say a nice breeze blowing off beautiful Lake Morton. I mean, what a scene set here. Absolutely. Just a, a fantastic view. I'm staying nice and uh, not burnt because of this beautiful hat I have on. And yeah, looking at the lake, uh, just a great view. It's going to be a great scenic view tomorrow. Um, speaking of lakes and lakefront, shout out to the sponsor segment Life Floor, providing the flooring over at Lake Silver. Um, really impressive stage they have over there. So, Yeah, well that's the, of course, is the home to the World Show Ski Championships, October 19th through the 23rd. Mm. We'll be providing a lot more information about that, but it's also the home of the Cypress Gardens Ski Team, Amateur Ski Team, mm -hmm. that performs twice a month, and you can check out their website for more information about their performances at Martin Luther King Park, I should say, Martin mm -hmm. Luther King Park in downtown Winter Haven. Great setting, and uh, make sure you check that out. It's all free, just like Mayfair by the Lake. <clears throat> and, you know, we, we talked about the importance of events like this mm -hmm. to the fabric of our community, yep. you know? And, you know, you just, this is sort of the uh, the icon of arts and cultural events for Polk County. Absolutely. And for 50 years, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's 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 amazing to see, like, you combine Mother's Day weekend, Kentucky Derby, being outside, having something to do. There's no shortage of things to do in the county like a Mayfair by the Lake. Who's your money on this weekend? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I usually make a decision about an hour before post time. This so. will be the first time I have not really dug in to the riders, the horses, or any of that type of stuff, because normally I'm up in uh, uh, Kentucky, you know, and oh, it's really? just kind of fall, yeah, for... Man, you got a good front row seat. Do Yeah, yeah. Now, now I do via TV. Oh, yeah. Well, well and, and listen, like just like the Kentucky Derby is one of many races, this is one of many events that happen throughout the community that have an arts focus and a culture focus, and to kind of build on more about Mayfair and, and stuff throughout the year, we're excited to have on Daryl Ward from the Polk Arts Alliance, the executive director over there. Daryl, thank you so much for your time and for joining us. Uh, thank you, guys, Ryan, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Well, Daryl, it was uh, <coughs> February. Transition was made. You were named executive director. Um, certainly a new direction and some things that you want to accomplish for the arts community, for the Arts Alliance, if you will. Give us some insights because your background, uh, particularly in academia, um, you know, you're an aggressive guy that uh, sees the big picture mm -hmm. and sees the role of arts and culture in the community. Well, thank you, Mark. And yeah, I, I've been here, I've lived in Polk County almost 50 years. And so um, I'm not originally from here. I like to, to jokingly tell everyone I, I was actually born in Boston, um, but I only lived there long enough to develop an unnatural affection for the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I'm originally from the Panhandle of Florida, but, but I lived here almost 50 years. And so Polk County is very important to me. I, I went to school here. I raised my wife and I raised our children here. So doing things that, that, that continue to bring awareness to what as you were just saying Ryan the amazing things that go on you know I was principal at Harrison School for the Arts for six years and I would go out around the county and talk to different people and you know you guys have probably heard some of this too sometimes you get some of that Polk County side eye oh what's Polk County and oh, there's nothing to do in Polk County and, and I finally got to the point where to what you were saying Ryan I would say do you live under a rock yeah because there's tons of things to do, especially if you do go countywide. And the thing I'm excited about, Mark, is really working with some of our, I, hes I hesitate to call them underserved, but smaller arts and cultural organizations, mm -hmm. uh, ones down in Frostproof and Fort Meade and Davenport. Uh, certainly we have fantastic communities in Lake Wales and Winter Haven and in here in Lakeland. But really bringing them all on board as, as alliance members and just continuing to advocate on their behalf um, help market their events so that, they, that you know, because Mayfair, you know, Mayfair is kind of an anomaly. People know about it. It's been around for so long. Yes, they do market it, but but it it's kind of its own thing. But m many of our arts and cultural events aren't that way. And so I'm, I want to help them maybe provide some funding through the Alliance. And, and so those are some uh, uh, kind of front burner things that I'm working on as the executive director. Oh, no, go ahead. No. I, I look like I was about to cut you off. So. Go right ahead. <laughs> I'm used to it. That, <laughs> <laughs> me too. That's, a, that's a weirdest that's thing. That's at home, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Usually I get half a sentence out, the other half I have no yeah, idea what I was going to say. That's all you need to know. Yep. Um, so you mentioned, you know, a lot of these th- these other events that you can, you know, potentially examine and say, all right, you know, maybe here are some things we can look at. You know, what is what does that process look like? Who's involved? How wide of an effort is that? And kind of what does you know, what does that look like maybe leading into 2023? Sure, and a great question. Well, first of all, real quick background on Polk Arts Alliance. We changed our name recently. You know, Mark and I had a conversation about this not long ago. We've changed it to the Polk Arts and Cultural Alliance mm. because many of our cultural heritage organizations are valuable members to, to the community and, and have events and have centers. And the History Center in Bartow is an example. The Lake Wales History Museum is a, you could go on and on. And we wanted to make sure that we were being inclusive. And so we changed the name to better reflect who we think we want to represent as an organization. Um, so that was a, a really important thing to do. We're undergoing some rebranding as well. Uh, it's been a long time, you know, changing the logo, refreshing the website, all the things that you need to do periodically as an organization. So we're, we're working on those sorts of things. But to get to your main point of your question, Ryan, what we're trying to do is work with organizations, uh, members, and look at them and say, okay, how can we assist you? Is it is it giving you some money for Facebook ads to promote your event. Is it partnering with you in a little more of a hands-on way? Recently, I partnered with a local bookstore here in, in Lakeland for National Poetry Month. Mm-hmm. And we did. I went down there and wrote some poetry. And so some of the things are, are more hands-on. Um, and it just kind of depends on where they are. But I really want it to be inclusive and inviting uh, because that's, that's the thing that we need to be more about and, and sharing more. Yeah, and I think something that we always impress is it's relationships, right? You have to know who you're dealing with. There's a person behind the event, and how do we best serve not only the event, but that person? Right. You know, provide them with the resources to be successful. Well, you know, and, and how many years have you heard me say this, that they're human beings first. Yeah. You know, God's children first. All the other stuff falls into place if you keep that in mind. Yeah. It's, it's not that complicated. But, you know, Daryl, we were talking a while back about uh, some of the needs, you know, within the arts community. And uh, it isn't always just handing somebody um, a check. That isn't what is going to make something successful. Right. You know, throwing money at a problem isn't a solution. Right. You know, it's just a Band-Aid. Well, and I think to that point, Mark, sometimes, you know, again, you and I were talking about this. And and people say this word. One of my favorite movies is The Prince's Bride. Oh, yeah. And I love that movie movie. because there's the famous line in it where the guy says, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Right. (laughs) And and, and there's a lot of words like that. Well, sustainability is where I was going. And people think it means something. But when you and I were having that conversation, Mark, that's the thing is that when you're talking with any organization, arts and cultural or not, is, okay. yeah, it's a great idea, maybe. But is, is it a sustainable event? You know, is it something it gets back into? I had a conversation with someone not long ago about who wanted to start a new arts kind of organization and I finally get just kind of had to look at that person and say yes you could do it you're passionate about it you have skills do we need that do we need another one of those organizations that you know, maybe we do but that's a question people don't often like to ask just because you can do it should you do it and what does it bring to the overall community in this case in the arts and cultural community and and I think that's those are hard questions to ask but I'm not I'm not afraid to ask well, those. It's it's a cost benefit question. Right. And it's just any type of business, arts and culture and you know heritage, it's a business. Right. Okay. And it needs to be run like a business. You know what are the benefits? Product or a service and let's go from there and then see how we can make that work right. with human beings. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and to kind of piggyback off that, you know, you mentioned um, sometimes people, not necessarily reinventing the wheel, but maybe there's something that's already in place that we can add on to versus creating a whole new thing. And, and maybe you tend to see people working in silos, right, rather than collectively. You know, how does, how, how does kind of your role in an organization help mitigate, you know, those, those I, I guess not experiences, but those situations from occurring and create a more cohesive experience? Yeah, and I, that's, that's honestly, that's the, the, the heavy lifting that I have to do because... Some of it's the silo effect, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. and, and others of it is, is just this idea of, of, like Mark said, about relationships and who people have conversations with. Sometimes intentionally they don't have conversations, and sometimes it's unintentional, but, mm-hmm. but you're exactly right. There's a lot of things that sometimes go on, and we're like, could, could we have made that better by looking at it a little bit differently, combining it with something else, uh, or separating it? You know, it right. depends. And, and so a lot of what I'm trying to really do is, is kind of what Mark was saying earlier, is have these conversations, develop these relationships. Really, in a nutshell, we like to say the Polk Arts and Cultural Alliance is the chamber for the arts. 
because that helps convince you. What is a chamber of commerce, right? It, right. it creates an environment where, in that case, business c commerce can flourish. We want to do the same thing for the arts, what in arts and cultural things. So what does that look like? Number one, it's bringing relevance to our members. How can we help them? Because if we're not relevant to them, they don't need us, right? That's a different conversation. Yeah. And so I, I've, I've got to get out, and I've been doing that and getting all over the county. I drove, I had to deliver our, we produce a, a four times a year magazine, Artifacts Magazine, which mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. magazine. Yeah. has a lot of the arts and cultural events, calendars, and so forth in it. Um, we just came out with our latest edition last week, so I had the distinct pleasure of driving all over Polk <laughs> County. Um, started in Lakeland, went to Bartow, went to Frostproof, came up Lake Wales and Haines City. Ooh. So, um, and that's actually good to do, yeah. you know, to get out and to have these conversations with, with all of these people. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, I think Daryl, as we both discovered a few weeks ago, we're both one-on-one -on -one guys. It's about a relationship. You can't do a relationship through your iPhone, you know, and like the millennials do. You know, it's got to be plus pressing right. the flesh, getting out and meeting people. Right. Hey, you're you're a human being. You're an individual. What are your wants? What are your needs? How can we work together? We've got about a minute left, and I want to get a plug-in for the Polk Museum of Art. And so many of our viewers have never been to the Polk Museum of Art. And uh, tell us about that, and if they want more information, where do they go to get it? Well, certainly, and that is fantastic plug there, Mark. I appreciate you doing that. On behalf of Dr. Alex Rich, uh, the executive director here at the, at the Polk Museum of Art at Florida Southern College, it, it's almost a cliche, but I'm telling you it's the truth. This is a world-class museum. If you have not seen that Florida Highwaymen exhibit that's in there, mm. it is absolutely fantastic. And, you, and never before assembled. It's all from the private collection of the Woodsby family who are fantastic to, to allow access to it. Over 270 Highwaymen paintings. They have 70 of them in there on exhibit. Wow. Never seen, not never, never seen publicly, they have, but not in, in, in one setting like mm. an exhibit. And that's the kind of things that the Polk Museum of Art does. Uh, Dr. Rich is fantastic about, and, and with Dr. Kerr at Florida Southern College, and just kind of thinking outside the proverbial box. Um, Polk Museum of Art has a website. You can reach them through our website, um, polkarts.org, as well. Um, maybe Mayfair is not the best time to go to the museum because there's a lot yeah, of other things go. going on. But the, I will say that exhibit's here through May 22nd, and you would just be so. My wife, we were here yesterday for an event. She loves to shop in the gift shop. It's an amazing gift shop. So there's just so much good about this museum, really, it is. Oh, that's fantastic stuff. Daryl, thank you so much for yes. joining us, and it's always a pleasure. We look uh, forward to some bigger and better things, and the, uh, the office situation has progressed. Oh. Yes. And so we uh, will we'll have some conversations. Have some more conversations about that. I think it's a good move. Right. And uh, that's really exciting, by the way. Mm -hmm. However, for now, after thanking Daryl for joining us and taking time out of his busy day, here's another busy activity Youth Basketball of America. Their headquarters are at the Advent Field House in Winter Haven. Well, we have some footage from a championship event of theirs just recently check this out and ryan myself will be back for more sports central right after this <laughs> 